Welcome to Team G503. I am your host, Scott Schiller, and this video is a very important one, and it's kind of a little tedious, but I think you'll enjoy it. It's all about the removal of the electrical system and the wiring in the 43 Willis MB. Um, a lot of times, these, these systems, these electric systems are hacked into, cut into, people alter them, uh, they change things, they add accessories. We're going to be putting ours back to factory in the future with a factory harness that I'm going to be getting from Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. But for the time being, you've got to remove the old stuff. Now, throughout this video, you're going to hear me stress multiple times to label and tag everything as you remove it, even if it's incorrect, even if you think it's incorrect. Just don't go cutting things and pulling them all out. You can remove things systematically, one step at a time. Keep yourself a roll of some kind of tape and a black magic marker, and just make a little note on there is where you pulled it off from, where it came from. It's going to make a lot easier for you in the future, even if you do get a new wiring harness. And you'll hear me say it over and over again. I, I can't stress it enough. You're going to want to keep that to compare and go back and remind yourself where those wires and circuits came from on your Jeep. On the driver's side in the engine compartment on the firewall, you'll see this junction block. And most of your wiring is connected in one way or form to, the, to there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two screws and I'm going to keep everything attached for the time being. As I disassemble this, I want to keep as much of this old wiring harness as I can together. Um, I would suggest to you as you disassemble this to take really detailed photographs and save them on your computer or actually print them out because you don't know how long it'll be before you kind of go back in here and hook all this back up and it might be nice to have your own personal reference. And I've got a little wrench on the inside of the firewall here. I'm just reaching around because there's a little nut there that holds this screw in. I'm just going to go ahead and take that off the firewall carefully. And I'm going to put the two nuts back on these screws so I don't lose them. On the front side of the master cylinder, you'll see this brake light switch. And there's two wires connecting to either side of it. We'll just simply pull those out. And this line is connected to the gusset, I'll call it, or the support of the tub. And we'll remove that clip. I like to keep the original clips and fasteners, but I'm going to leave it on that wire for the time being because I am going to ball this all up and tape it all up and put it into a bag so I can compare it to the new harness that I'll be installing in the future. This line goes back to the master block here that's on the firewall that I've removed it before. On the upper side of the floorboard, we're on the outside now, you can see these two little retaining clips that hold the wires that go to the high-low beam switch and this wire which is being used to go back to the rear tail lights. So I'll go ahead and remove this switch. I'll have to put a screwdriver on the inside of the tub and remove this nut. Remove the clips. And this big wiring harness we got here can be dropped down. The leads from the switch actually are connected to the junction block, as you see here. And the one power lead that we pulled out through the dash that went to the main light switch. On the passenger side of the firewall, we've got these wires that are protruding through. And this is a completely incorrect setup for our 43 MB. Now I'll go to a solenoid. These two particular wires were just thumbed together and taped. So we'll have to remove all this just out of curiosity. I want to see how this was done here. Again, these wires just twisted together thumbwise and tape put on them. Shove those back through the firewall. I'm going to remove these leads off this little block that's installed here. I believe that this small block terminal is a part of our radio suppression setup for the filterette. We've got all kinds of frayed wire here. It was rubbing against the wall. It's all deteriorated. 
This goes to the ignition switch that I took off from the inside of the dash. I'm just going to go ahead and cut that. This solenoid has been mounted by the drilled through the firewall and just with some simple screw bolts. The solenoid mounting thing is not actually something new. A lot of guys like to have just a simple key start as opposed to the floor switch. But we're going to put this back to factory, so I'm going to remove this solenoid and put it on the shelf. Just a, just a standard solenoid, and that lead would have went to the starter. That lead would have went to the ignition. We've got this two post junction block here that's mounted to these two studs that are here. And that's very important to the filterette that's inside the dashboard and the suppression system for the radio. But to remove this, all you have to do is take these two 3 8 inch nuts off and that'll come right off there. And I'll place that in the bag with the nuts and the lock washers. The filterette is located on the firewall underneath the passenger side of the dash, as you see here. And I've got three bolts remaining on that, which are located there and at the very top corner. If you remember in the previous video, we had one of the bolts that were going through a suppression strap that I removed. So we go to the firewall and we'll remove the filterette. Just something that I do. I like to take the bolt out that's the hardest to get to first. So in that, this case, it would be the top one because I have to reach way up underneath the dash with the wrench and then I'll take this off with the socket. I'm simply leaning over the cowl and reaching in. The lower two bolts and nuts are pretty easy to get at. For those of you who like the bolt markings, these are a C over a TR bolt that are holding this filterette in place. With the filterette removed, you can see those wires are attached to some of the other accessories, and there's a reason for that. We'll talk about that when we actually rewire the Jeep. For now, I'm just going to remove each one of those leads and label them to the other end and wrap them up and put them in my bag. If we look inside where the gauges were, the holes through the dash, we can see two circuit breakers mounted on either side of the support that goes from the firewall to the dash. I'm systematically just going through and removing the wires from the filterette, and I've done it since I've done the gauges. I'm just labeling the ends of the wires to their respective locations and then removing them. The two circuit breakers that are mounted to the support are held in place with a nut and a slotted flathead screw on the back side. So you have to use a screwdriver to get in there. It's a little tricky, but that's how we're going to remove both of those. This asphalt coated loom runs from the firewall. There's some clips underneath the tub, and that's not a factory one. It runs all the way back up through the top of the frame and out to the back of the tub where the lights were. So I'll remove these clips and pull this last wire. I'm on the rear cross member on the passenger side, and we've got leads that go to the opposite side of the frame, and they're all held together with a little clip that's right there. And this is not proper wiring for an MB. There were some lights added to this. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this and pull the wire through the opposite side. So we've got all the wiring, the switches, and the filterette. Everything's labeled and tagged where I took it off from. Now, I'm not saying that what I removed was 100% correct. However, it was what was there, and I save everything. So when I install the new wiring harness, I have a reference to go back to if I need to. Uh, I'll be using a diagram to do the new harness, but it's not ever a bad idea to save the old stuff just to be sure. So I'll tag and bag all of this and put it in a special box marked electrical and put it on the shelf until we do the actual wiring harness. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it helpful and enjoyable. Again, don't just go taking a pair of wire snippers and 
I'm getting a new one and cutting it all off. You saw kind of how I did that and how I stressed about the tagging and bagging and labeling and everything. You're going to thank me for it later. In the future, when we do the, the actual wiring of the vehicle, I'll show you why. If you like what we're doing here and you'd like to follow us on YouTube, we're archiving every video since the day that this Jeep got delivered to Aiken, South Carolina, step by step, piece by piece, bolt by bolt. You can subscribe to us at Team G503 on YouTube. Until next time, keep it safe and happy Jeeping.